the reality of a Trevon Martin. Never before in human existence, no race, a nation has ever been subjected to such cruel and systematic suffering as we the people whose skin has been made black by nature's choice of pigment and not our own. Never in the history of America has a president whose color did not match the forefathers have been so disrespected, called a liar, not Mr. President, but called Obama in names unmentioned. If he takes a vacation, he doesn't care about the people or he spends too much money wherever he goes. But not one word was said of George Bush flying a jet fighter, or not one word is being said about the taxes you and I are paying right here in Texas, extra taxes because George Bush happens to live in Dallas County. For some strange and unknown reason, the mere fact of the color of our skin has caused us to be looked down upon as inferior in the eyes of the world and to be singled by groupies as slaves, chattel property, not human beings. We have been called everything except children of the Most High God. Let's face the facts. If Trevon Martin was the one who shot George Zimmerman, he would immediately have been placed in jail and no questions asked. Not because of who he is, but because of the color of his skin and his hoodie. He doesn't have the economics, I mean his relatives nor his family, to be in a neighborhood that he was in. So indeed, he must be up to no good. All sorts of explanations have been given in an attempt to show us why our plight has been so wretched and to explain why we have had to absolve such unbearable conditions and receive such humane treatment ever since there was a black race. Some attempt to use the Bible to imply that Noah cursed us and God allowed us to become slaves of the human race because our relationship to Noah. But the Bible simply does not teach that. For some way I read that God had made of one blood for all nations of men to dwell upon the face of the earth. God is, just, is not just a lover of Chinese, Hispanic, white, or black. God is the lover of the whole human race. Is that right? He didn't choose any specific color. He just made sure that all nations, people's blood was red. Doesn't, doesn't matter when you get sick what color you are. It matters that you find the right blood type so you can have a blood transfusion. Never, never, never before in human history has there been such an attempt to cover up, uh, take away the place to the nation of blacks in human history. History has always attempted to show blacks in the negative instead of the positive. They would rather show Tarzan beating up 100 black Mandango warriors than anything else. They'd rather show Whitney Houston on crack, James Brown in jail, a black man being put in jail for selling crack. You hear him say, Trevon Smoke, that's not the issue. The issue, you shot a young kid because you felt he was up to no good. That's the issue. George Bush was an alcoholic, yet became the president. Y'all don't seem to hear me in here. And, 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 and no doubt about it, we, 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 do, we do have our young men crazy. Pants sagging down below our waist. But just every now and then, we might hear of a single black individual's 
contribution to society, but never is there any mention of a positive contribution as a people. Collectively, we are almost always referred to in negative ways. We have, been written, we have been written out of history and only have we been included when it showed us as slaves or worse. Therefore, it is important for us to teach our children who we are and what we are in history for ourselves. For when we know not who we are and where we are and where we have been, then others will write your history. There are many contributions that we have made to the welfare of the world. But since we did not write our own history, others have received the credit for it. Don't think I've forgotten my text. There was a time when we didn't know who we were. And if a people don't know who they are, no wonder we can have an identity crisis. Can I get a witness in here? No wonder we have an identity crisis. We, 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 we put that, we call it kunk back in my day. Y'all, y'all don't seem to know what I'm talking about. And, 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 and they would get duke. And, 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 and they would plaster it on their head and they'd wear these stocking caps. You, you got to learn who you are. They called us boy when we were old enough to be their daddy. We call ourselves colored. They call us uncle when we were not a member of their family, and we ourselves call ourselves Negroes. They call us other names, and we said, okay, call us what you want. Somewhere, somehow, somebody who could read red, red where the wisest man, man by the name of Solomon says, I'm black, but I'm comely. I like this part, as the lily among the thorns, uh, so is my love among the dogs. You can't get a better black man to, than to love anybody because a black man knows how to love when he has been taught how to love. It was at that point that we found out about James Brown where he said, say it loud. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Say it loud, I'm what? It was at that point we accepted ourselves. It is even evident in our community we are shown to be guilty before the case even starts because of years of buried injustice. Ask Rodney King, can we just all get along? Even ask Siobhan Martin with a bag of Skittles in his hand. To be black means to be oppressed. To be black means to be counted among the disherited and the disenfranchised. Now it might sound like strange music tapping, dancing on the rhythmic membranes of your inner ear, but when we talk about blackness in a symbolic sense, then it is perfectly proper to say that Jesus had a black experience. Is that right? He was despised and rejected. He was called illegitimate. He was born on the wrong side of the tracks. He was not a part of the power structure. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? He was into transforming lies. His preaching got him into trouble with the government. Even one of his disciples became a government informer and turned him over to the authorities. He was arrested without being told what charge was against him or what law had he broken or what crime had he committed. He was tried without a lawyer or a jury. In fact, he was found guilty before he was even tried. No grand jury was present. They tried him at night when most courts are hateful. They tried him in four different counties, and he could not receive justice in any. They pardoned a criminal who was found guilty by trial and jury just so they could have a cross to hang my Jesus on. Jesus was a victim of police brutality, but the record says they whipped him all night long. He was wounded for our transgressions. 
He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Jesus had a black experience. That's why, that's why if anybody ought to claim to Jesus, Black folk ought to cling to Jesus. I can't get no help up in here. But we know about injustice. Black folk know about suffering. Even some of our Hispanic brothers know about suffering. We can train folk for the job, but can't have the job. We can work late hours, give our hearts to the job, but when promotion time comes, it goes to somebody else. Can't you see racial profiling in my text? A black man by the name of Simon. Mark is a person of considerable creativity and theological insight. <laughs> Mark is the writer of the shortest gospel record, and yet he is also the author of the oldest gospel record. <laughs> there were three schools of thought concerning Jesus when Mark wrote his text. Some said Jesus was a rabbi whose teachings should be remembered and followed. Another school of thought said that Jesus was a cosmic redeemer, but it ignored his earthly ministry. The third school of thought said that Jesus was a wonder worker whose fanatical followers should emulate and copy his charismatic achievements. They said the disciples ought to do what Jesus did. But when Mark viewed the situation, he thought it feasible. Mark thought it advisable to submit to his readers and to us the fact that the hermeneutical framework, oh, preach Pastor Cox, within which Jesus can best be understood is through the cross and his resurrection. For had it not been for Jesus, just where in the world would you and I be? If it had not been for his mercy and his grace, if it had not been for his blood shed on Calvary, I believe we'd all be lost. The text, the text, look at the text. The text says the soldiers are leading him to Golgotha. They're leading him to a place of execution. <laughs> They're leading Jesus to a place where criminals were put to death. But before they reached their destination, before they arrived on Mount Calvary, the Bible says my Jesus staggers and stumbles. These Roman soldiers are anxious to see this peculiar prisoner receive the full treatment. They, they would not let Jesus die before reaching the place of execution. But what are they to do? They being Roman citizens and Roman soldiers uh, could never touch that cross because that cross represented to them a thing that ought to be despised and below their level. They being Romans could never touch that cross, but to them a cross was a thing to be ashamed of. They being Roman citizens could never touch that cross, for crucifixion was the most ignominious death of one could die. But the prisoner staggers and stumbles. For you see, the prisoner is made to carry his own cross. But when those Roman soldiers saw the master stumble, when those Roman soldiers saw my Jesus uh, stagger and stumble, make no mistake about it, my brothers and sisters, uh, it was natural for Jesus to stumble and stagger, for he was son of God, but he was also son of man, subject to weakness. Uh, Jesus was human, uh, for he had been up a long time. It was natural that he would stagger. He was weary in the flesh. That's why Jesus understands when you are weary in the flesh, because it happened to him on the way up to Mount Calvary. But just at the time 
And these Roman soldiers were, were about to fall in what my grandmother used to call, and I haven't heard this word in a long time, so I put it in the sermon into a differ. Just at the time when these hardened soldiers uh, were about to become victims of, of a problem that they could not solve and a predicament in which they could not handle, they looked up and saw a black man. The first recorded history of racial profiling. What's that man's name? Mark tells us his name is Simon. And he's coming in from the country. And Mark tells us that they compelled him to bear his cross. Look at the text. Now, you may not agree with me, but I think it was providence which brought black folk to this land. And I think that God has been looking after us ever since. For who but us can work such long hours as we work and still make it? Who but us can make as little as we make and look as well as we do. If you, if you look at yourself and, and if you look at me, you think I got a million dollars, but, but I ain't got a penny in my pocket. Uh, who but us can make as little as we make and ride in such fine cars uh, as we live in? Uh, who but us can say like David, I once was young and now I'm old, but I ain't never, ever, ever seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging bread. Uh, if anybody should love one another, it ought to be us. If anybody should stand together, it ought to be us. These, these, these racial profilers saw a black man. These soldiers saw a man with a hoodie on who should not be in their neighborhood. What's that man's name? Mark tells us his name is Simon. And he's coming in from the country, and Mark tells us that they compelled him to bear Jesus' cross. I see three lessons being thrown at me, and then I'll give you these three objectives, and then I will take my seat. Well, in the first place, uh, it is possible for us to help people whom we do not know. Can I say that again? It is possible for us to help people whom uh, we do not uh, know. Simon didn't know Jesus. Simon was never introduced to Jesus. As far as Simon was concerned, uh, Jesus was just another ordinary criminal. As far as Simon was concerned, this is just another violator of the law. Simon had no idea that this was Jesus, and yet he helped him to bear his cross. And in so many ways, we help people whom we do not know. And every one of us would always or should realize it or not, or sooner or later, you're going to help somebody who you do not know. Just yesterday, just, just, just yesterday, I was on my way home, and I was at 1382. And, and you know, always there's somebody begging. And, and, and there, there was this, 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 this couple on the corner, and, 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 and they, they, they had a sign saying, ran out of gas. And, and, and I was watching as people passed by this couple. You know, you know, sometimes you can really tell when people in trouble. Oh, y'all didn't hear what I say. Some, sometimes you can really tell when, when people are in trouble. And, and I watch people pass by because the first thing I, the first mental thing you say, they ought to get them a job. They're just out there trying to make money. And, 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 so, and so as I watch the crowd, the cars pass by, and, and, and you know, sometimes you be in these long lines. Wait, I wish to, can, can I make this light? I'm, I wish these people hurry up. And, 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 and I watch car after car pass by, and I'm, and I'm just looking. And I, I decided to, 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 to pull over on the side and say, come here. They came, and, 
and I said, you need gas. They said, yeah, we, 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 we coming, we coming, oh, we've been all the way to Galveston, all this way down, we tr we, we're trying to get to, to Amarillo. And, 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 and we broke, and we done ran out of money, and, and here we are. Now, quite naturally, the things I've gone through with some folk like that, I'll just pass them by. But, but there was something in, in, in the way that they said, so instead of me giving them money, I said, where's your car? They said, there it is. It's over there by racetrack. I said, okay, let's go on over there. So they walked. I wasn't going to let them get in my truck. I don't know them that well. <laughs> Sister Cox might wind up without a husband. She don't want to wind up without a husband in the name of Jesus. Isn't that right, baby? I can't hear you, baby. That's right. <laughs> and so, and so, and, and, and so I, I pulled, pulled up on the side of him and, and filled their car up, and, and just to make sure they wasn't lying, I said, which way is Amarillo? Now, I know. If anybody knows which way Amarillo is, I know. Amen. They said, I'm going to get on 20, then I'm going to get on 287. Then, they, then I said, oh, they know where they're going. And so I filled the car up and said, God bless you, and I, I kept on, I helped somebody who I did not even know. <laughs> secondly, secondly, this incident also shows us that light is full of the unexpectedness. But you see, when Simon arose that morning, he didn't have any idea that before noon of that day, he would be helping to bear the cross of a stranger. Life is fraught with unexpectedness. How many times, think about it, have you looked for help and behold, sickness came? How many times have we expected strength and experienced weaknesses? How many times have we expected light and found ourselves walking in darkness? How many times have we looked for joy and found sorrow instead? How many times have we expected to walk on the mountaintop and found ourselves, I don't know about you, but find and found and saw and walked and you found yourself knee deep in the valley? How many times have you looked for success and experienced failure? Life is full of unexpectedness. David, as a shepherd boy, didn't expect to be king. Gideon didn't expect to lead 300 men to fight the Midianites. Samuel, as a child, didn't expect to be judge of Israel. That's why, that's why I'm not that hard on those five foolish virgins. I believe that if the wedding had been on time, they had enough oil. Y'all didn't hear me. You shouldn't be too hard on them. But when they read the wedding invitation and saw what the hour was, they had enough oil. But the mistake came when they had not made any preparations for handling the unexpected. And anybody who fails to make preparations uh, for handling the unexpected is not wise. But this life is full of unexpectedness for where, for we know where we have been and we know where we are but who can tell what a new day may bring. You can talk about it with Job. Job would tell you that life is full of unexpectedness. One morning Job got up and dressed himself as usual, had his breakfast as usual, then Job went to offer sacrifices as usual and just in case his children might have messed up. He made sacrifices also for them. But he didn't know whether or not they had done any wrong. And when he made sacrifices for them, what happened all of a sudden? Here comes bad news. I tell you, life is full of unexpectedness. Sometimes, sometimes it's good for the children to see the parents on their knees. Praying to God, not for something else, but praying for them. But sad to say, some children in God's church have never seen their parents at prayer. And the only time some children hear the word God is when there's a dam on the other end of it. Job offered sacrifices 
for himself. But you hear Job saying, the Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Is anybody here who had been caught off guard? Ask my daughter, Kareem. She was caught off guard, laid off a job in Kansas, said a prayer, kept on moving. Said to Adela, she said, Mama, I'm going to pray for another job. And while I pray for another job, I'm going to ask for, I'm going to give myself a $30,000 raise. <laughs> Y'all didn't hear what I said. A 30, I, I wish I could make 30, let me shut up. $30,000 $30, raise. And, and lo and behold, a child got a job, a brand new job. And a 30 some odd thousand dollar raise. You, you got to tell me God is good. But every now and then, every now and then while I'm going through my situation, I ask the Lord, like my grandmother used to sing the song, Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me with thy powerful hand. When, when Simon got up that morning, he didn't expect to help bear a stranger's cross. Now the question is, why was Simon living in the country? Why was Trevon in the suburbs? Well, it was the week of the Passover. And eight days in, and Marriott and Holiday Inn were all filled to capacity with pilgrims. Trevon was going home to his father's house after getting a bag of Skittles and tea. Simon, like Joseph and Mary, had to go to the country, but there was no room in the inn. But when he arose the, the next morning, he didn't expect to bear a cross. When Javon went to the store, he didn't expect to be met by a Zimmerman. I can tell you life is full of the unexpectedness. And if you don't believe me, you just keep on living. Is there anybody in here who can testify that you had to bear some burdens that you did not expect to bear? Is there anybody in here who had to walk through some valleys that you did not expect to walk through? Can I just get five veteran Christians who can testify when you found yourself in that kind of a condition, you said, Lord, guide my feet while I run this race. Hold my hand while I fight this battle. Lead me through the path of righteousness for your name's sake, that I might come through forth as gold tried in the fire. Then the last lesson, and I'm going to sit down. There is a blessing sometimes in that which we are compelled to do. Did you hear what I said? There is a blessing sometimes in being compelled to do that which makes us uncomfortable. Most of us will hesitate when compelled to perform a duty which we did not volunteer a request. Most of us become hostile and bitter when we are compelled to do that which we care not to do. Most of us become resentful and reject that which might remove us from our comfort zone. Most of us reject the fact that we should have no other gods before the God of gods, but being compelled to do something can in the future turn out to be a blessing. I'm a prime example of that myself. I was compelled to come over here to Faith Temple. I was forced to do something I didn't want to do. But I found out that it was the best thing in the world that could have ever happened to me. When it called Simon and told him what he had to do, look at the text, Simon refused. I know he did because the Bible said they compelled him. When it told Simon to pick up that cross, Simon hesitated. I know he did because the Bible says they compelled him. 
when it told him that they wanted him to carry that tree up Calvary, Simon made excuses. He tried to get out of it, but they made him bear that cross. Simon didn't know it at the time, but in bearing that cross, there was a blessing for him. He didn't know it at the time, but when he helped to bear that cross, uh, Simon caused his name to be placed in the annals of sacred history. Simon didn't know it at the time, but when he helped to bear that cross, uh, he placed himself in the annals of biblical history. <laughs> Simon didn't know it at the time, but Simon became a co-partner in the plan of salvation. <laughs> he didn't know it at the time, but he was fulfilling his life's destiny. <laughs> Come on now, go back with me to Serene. Serene was the capital of the African providence called Libya. And Serene lay 11 miles south of the Mediterranean Sea. Come go with me. Let's visit Simon. Simon is back at home. Simon still does not know who he helped on that Friday morning. But some of the neighbors have come over to Simon's house. And Simon is talking about his trip to Jerusalem. And my mind begins to wonder. Don't you hear one of the neighbors saying, Simon, how was your trip? And don't you hear Simon saying, I had a good trip? And don't you hear one of the neighbors saying, tell us more about your trip. And Simon uh, said, except for one thing, uh, it was just a routine trip. Uh, but on Friday morning, uh, when I came into the city, uh, the Roman soldiers had a prisoner uh, on their way up to the place of execution, uh, and they made me help bear the cross of that man. Don't you hear the neighbors saying, Simon, Tell us more about that prisoner. And don't you hear Simon saying, well, uh, he was a peculiar sort of a prisoner. He didn't complain about what they were doing to him. Don't you hear Simon saying they had a crown of thorns on his head. His face was bloody, but he wasn't complaining. Don't you hear Simon saying his robe was seamless? It was woven throughout. Don't you hear Simon saying he had a peculiar look on his face? Don't you hear the neighbor saying, Simon, have you any idea who that man was? Simon, have you any idea whose cross that was? Simon, have you any idea who that man might have been? And Simon said, no, I don't know the man, but there was something different about him. He never said how the flies were in his wounds. He never mentioned about all the spit that was in his face. He never complained about the whip that they beat him with. He never said or complained or said a word. When they said he saved others, why won't he save himself and us? All I ever heard him say was, Father, 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 forgive them, for they know not what he do. Don't you hear the neighbor sitting back and saying, well, Simon, huh? on the basis of your description, huh? that sounds uh, like the prophet from Galilee. Huh? Simon, huh? on the basis of your description, huh? that sounds like Jacob's Shiloh. Huh? Simon, huh? on the basis of your description, huh? that sounds uh, like Ezekiel's will huh? way up in the middle of the air. Huh? 
Simon on the basis of your description. That sounds like Jeremiah's healing balm in Gilead. Simon on the basis of your description. That sounds like the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Simon, uh, on the basis of your description, uh, that sounds like uh, El Shaddai, uh, Jehovah Rasha, uh, Jehovah Shalom, uh, Jehovah Nisi. Uh, Simon, uh, on the basis of your description, uh, that sounds like Job's uh, living redeemer. Uh, bread uh, when you're hungry. Uh, water when you're thirsty your bridge over your troubled waters i don't know about you this afternoon but jesus should not bear his cross alone and all the world go free there's a cross for you and me and there's a cross i think for all of y'all can i get a witness in here when i think about what god did for me how he bought me from a mighty long way I can say thank you is there anybody in here who knows how to say thank you is there anybody in here who knows how to say thank you if you know how to say thank you get on your feet and say thank you thank you he's been good thank you thank you thank you because of that, I'm able to know that Jesus lives. He lives in my heart, and he lives in my soul. And had it not been for the fact that Jesus died for me, Huh? When I think about what I did, think about what I used to do. And God saw fit for me not to get in trouble. And I didn't find myself in jail. I ought to say thank you. I ought to say thank you for the foolhardy things I did when I was young. But a foolhardy thing some of us are still doing while we're young and we didn't get caught. It was the mercies of God that brought me through. And because of his mercy, I thank him. Thank him every day of my life. I thank him. Come on, sing. Oh, that's 
tears may fade away. I'm so glad your love will stay. Cause I love you and you show me Jesus. Oh 